Hi guys, Jackie Thomas here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've been away for about a week and a couple of days because I wanted to take the first week of summer break off so I could spend with the kids because they only had one week before they started summer camp. So today's video, we're gonna be cooking fried chicken. We're gonna be making a homemade pasta sides. Now I don't like the instant because to me it's not flavorful enough. So I just buy the pasta and I make my own and most of the time I try to use a pretty different pasta today we're gonna choose ziti or penne probably gonna end up using the penne because I like the way it looks better and all that flavor gets down in the noodles and makes it more flavorful we're gonna be putting cream cheese butter this is a cheese blend that I get from Sam's I like it in salads and when I make my pasta sides I don't like it for if I'm making um chicken alfredo because it doesn't melt good on that but we're going to be using corn oil this is a pretty big tub that I get from Sam's too I'm going to give you an update on my plants I told you I make my own fertilizer with coffee grinds and eggshells this is an old peanut oil container I've got my crushed eggshells in there and this is what I've been saving up for probably about three years I've been using it for like three years the only thing you want to do is make sure that if you're going to save ground eggshells like this, make sure that your eggshells are completely dry before you put it in there. You don't want any moisture causing any bacteria. Then you have to throw everything away. All right, so we're going to take a before picture. Well, I'm going to include a before picture and a current picture of what my flowers look like now. Okay guys, what I've done so far, this is about five cups of the ground eggshells. I'm gonna refresh my fertilizer. I've asked my coworkers at work to start saving me their K-Pods from when they drink coffee, they drink a lot. So this is really not that meaning. All right, what I'm gonna do is open up the K-Pods and that's my coffee grounds right there. So I'm going to go ahead and open up all of them and I'm going to pour them into the fertilizer. Okay, what I've done is emptied out the contents of the pods. I used to just throw the whole pot in the, the um, jug of fertilizer, but I think it looks a little neater if you take it all out. So I've emptied everything and this is what I'm going to be putting in the fertilizer. So this is what we're gonna be doing out here today. We're going to clean out all this mess that's in there. And it looks rather nasty. We're gonna clean that out because that has been in there for a long time. All right, and we're gonna put the fresh eggshells and some new coffee grounds. They are used, but they're fresh. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take all that nastiness out of there and get started. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take all this out. Now, if I had gloves on, I would squeeze all that good fertilizer out of there, but I don't, so I'm just going to put it in the bucket. And it stinks. It smells like Commodore. But that's what most compost smell like, so I'm sure if you do this, you're used to it. Okay, we're going to put this to the side. Put it to the side. There we go. Now we're just gonna go ahead and stink. I know. I don't have to be that too messy. Good shot. Can I mix? Yeah, you can mix it a little. Let me get the camera. Yeah. Okay, my little helper is out here today. Turn around, Lauren. This is Lauren. <laughs> Thank Again. you. <laughs> Stir it up. Gonna store it good. Okay. 
Now we're gonna just top that off all the way with water. Okay, and I fertilized my plants this past weekend. I don't fertilize, but every two weeks, I water once a week. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with water. All right, we're just gonna fill it up. Go ahead. I'll have it real hot because you don't want that smell to come out. As it gets to the top, slow down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Layla is in the house doing her own thing. Lauren always wants to be underneath helping. Okay, thank you, that's good. All right, let me have this hose. You go I'm ahead gonna... and stir it. Okay. Give it a couple of stirs. And you can come out here once so we can start if you want to, but everything is gonna mix together. Okay. That's okay. Start again. Okay, that's good. Now put the top back on it. The top is in the waste bucket. Snap it back on there. Hard. Okay, I'll do it here. Just get the hose. Okay. Good girl. Okay, here you go. You get the camera. Don't put the camera on me. Put the camera on the fertilizer. Okay, on a little bit. Go on with the eggshells. I gotta wash my hands. Good girl. Okay. Now it's been raining here. Last week, and it rained. This week. So I haven't had to water my plants this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that hose out of the way. This is an update on what the snake plants look like since I've added my fertilizer. And it's been two weeks actually as of today. And this is what these plants look like two weeks after I did the repotting. That's the cactus, it looks a little, decrepit the flowers are good though the flowers are gonna bloom again all right now i don't like what my sage looks like that's two plants and the one on the right there looks like it's just shot so we might just end up taking that out but we'll just let it sit in there all right they don't look as good as what i had last year i think last year you see the new leaves coming that's what you want and it's, it'll sprout other plants so i'm probably gonna end up going to the store and finding a couple more to put in there because I like a big plant, a big pot of sage. Now this is my rosemary. It's looking good. It never, nothing ever happened to it. Now since in the two weeks that I posted the first video, this is cilantro. I love it in my salsa. I love it in my pico de gallo and it looks really good and fresh. These are my pepper plants. They have made an amazing recovery. The one back here was the one that was dying. So it's the smallest one, but it came back. I didn't have to throw it away. So it's four in here and it's four in there and they've got the little flowers on them. So that's gonna be a pepper, eventually. <laughs> this is a little flower that Lauren brought home the last day of school, or the last week of school, probably that Thursday. And we're gonna make it grow too. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is wash our chicken. Now, a lot of you may have noticed or may have heard there's been a lot of debate for the, like the last couple of years about people washing their meat, okay? For one, I always wash my meat. I don't care what type of meat it is, I'm gonna wash it because that's the way I grew up being trained in the kitchen that you wash your meat, especially chicken because you have salmonella and I don't want that to poison anybody. But what the thing they say now is, during, your, during the cooking process, all the germs are cooked off of the chicken. No, that still doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna wash the chicken with cold water. Get out of the pack. Take that pad, that looks so nasty. <laughs> no, I'm sick of I'm gonna put that over there. No, no, don't touch that. Okay, we're gonna wash the chicken off. 
in the sink, directly in the sink. That looks like blood on it. Oh, my, that is going to have blood on it until it's cooked. That's why you wash it off. I would never just cook this chicken straight out of the bag, out of the pack, season it, and just put it in all that stuff. I wouldn't be able to eat it. You want to wash it until the water runs clear. You don't have to pick each one up, wash it individually, because all the chicken is getting exposed to that water. Okay. And wash it good. And as always, anytime I'm cook, anytime I'm putting any meat <coughs> or, you, or anything in my sink, this is my Clorox and water. I know it says water only, but you guys remember, I just haven't took the water only off. This is Clorox and water, and I'll spray the entire surface down with it and let it sit for about 10 minutes and then wash it off again. And I'll wash my hands with the Clorox cleanups. Show that. Okay. All right. So now that we've washed it off, I'm going to go ahead and start putting my seasonings on what I'm going to use. Okay. Lauren's seasoned salt. Lauren's garlic salt. A little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Go ahead and put it on there. All right, that's all I'm going to use. Just the garlic salt. This is the seasoned salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love spices. I really do. I think the most basic spice you can use is salt and pepper. I'm going to use more pepper than salt. My stepfather, Thomas Henderson, taught us to love pepper, and we do. And I'm not going to use as much salt because I already have salt in the other two seasonings. So that's all the salt I'm going to use. Because the last thing I want to do is bite into a beautiful piece of fried chicken and it's salty. Okay, so I'm going to mm, you No, know I want you to mix. Thank you, Donna. Can you cover the chicken? Yeah. There you go. All right, so we're just going to let that sit in the sink for a minute while we get our flour ready. I can help with the flour. Okay. Well, let me show you what I use for flour. This is sephorizing flour. I'm gonna put about four cups in here. This is what's in here. This is a can of, I think, a large or medium can of soup. It was a medium can of soup, and I use that to cut up my biscuits. And I just let it stay in the flour. Okay, that's about four cups of flour. That's good, maybe five. Okay, that's good. Well, about four and a half. Okay, let's come over here, and I'll show you what slices I'm gonna use. Now remember, you always want to season your coating. I always use flour. I never use the flakes or mm, I forgot what they call it, um, panko flakes. I never use that. I just use flour, separizing flour. And these are the four spices that I'm going to be using today. It's parsley flakes, white pepper, smoked paprika, and sage. You never want to add salted spices to your coating because you already have salt on your chicken. You don't want it to be too salty. So and you don't have to use these. This is just what I'm using today. All right, so I'm just going to sprinkle some in here. That parsley is going to make it pretty. The white pepper is going to give it a little bit of heat. The smoked paprika 
it's going to give it a, a little bit of heat too and a little bit of color and it's paprika now that's not the hot the cayenne pepper is hot so that paprika just gives it color and sage i use a lot of and this is just a little bit of the last sage i bought but since i grow my own this will be the last time i use this when i get it all gone when i when it's used all up okay i'm gonna get my can't find my lid. so okay i usually have a little small whisk that I use to mix it all in, but you want to see your spices in your flour. And it just gives it extra flavor. My stepdad used to do this. He taught us how to salt or season your flour, season your coating. Okay, then we can go ahead and get my oil ready. Okay, I've cleaned the sink out, and I just wanted to show you guys something right quick. This big pack of trash that I'm going to throw out that had the chicken in it, this is a two-gallon size um, Ziploc bag that I get from Sam's. They have bigger bags if you go to um, Lowe's or Home Depot, and I usually put the kids' toys in those. They're, they, store, it's real, they store really good, but this right here keeps the spill from getting into the bottom of your trash can because it holds everything in. And this is just a regular gallon size and put that trash in there. When I have my grandbabies over, the ones who are still in diapers, when they have a messy diaper, I use a quart size Ziploc bag. And that keeps the smell down until we can go to the dump. Okay, now, I'm gonna come over here. This is the spoons that I'm gonna be using. I already have my water on for the pasta. And I never add oil or salt to my pasta. I just let it go ahead and boil. What you want to do is when you first put that pasta in, make sure you have a rapid boil for your water. Make sure it's boiling rapidly. You're going to want to stir it like when you first get it in there for like 30 seconds to a minute. That helps it to not stick together. You want to stir it about every couple of minutes until it settles down because once it get, gets past the sticking stage, it won't stick and you won't have pasta sticking to the bottom of your pan. All right, and these spoons, I got these from the Dollar Tree, so that helps not get your hand as hot. Now, you can see the quality of it. The one on the left is one that I bought years ago, and it's thicker than what they're selling now. These are just a dollar, so I hate that I didn't keep all of these because that is so much thicker. Look at that. Than this thin thing but they all serve a good purpose but these are the ones that i love this is what they have now and they have the spoons slotted spoons the solid spoons they have the forks they have a lot of different things over there on the wall and that helps me with my serving my food i've got my oil heating up for my chicken and i don't have a real deep fryer so this pan the one i love that my that i got from my grandmother it it cooks everything good. It fries chicken good. It does my candy yams good. It does my green beans good because everything just boils down nicely and perfectly. It conducts heat really good. So it's, you know, it's even all the way through, just like all cast iron. Um, if anybody knows of a good deep fryer that they're using, put it in the comments because I'm going to be trying to buy one. I've been reading reviews and I haven't been satisfied with what I've been seeing. So if anyone has been using anything, Day. Pop a picture of it, put it in the comments. I've got Lauren's um, breading station set up for her. She wanted to do it, so she's going to be helping me today. Now, what she's going to do is take the, the seasoned chicken, dredge it in the flour, and put it on the plate until that oil is good and hot. And it's almost ready. All right, go ahead, Lauren. Well, this one. And her hands are clean. Let me get on this side. She likes to help in the kitchen. Get it coated real good and put it in the plate. This is good. That's good, yeah. I made that really crispy. I know. <laughs> I like mine. Thank you, Lauren. I really appreciate you helping me. You want to come with Mama? Don't do nothing. Well, she doesn't want to do it right now, but that's okay. She'll get a little. She'll get a flair for cooking later on. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let her get that, get about seven Punch. pieces coated. I'm gonna drop them in the oil. I'm supposed to be watching my favorite movie. I'm gonna get a pinch of flour, sprinkle it in the oil. That's how you can tell if it's ready. And it's, it looks like it's ready. So we're gonna wait maybe another couple of minutes and then we'll go ahead and start putting the chicken in. So right now, we dropped the piece in the pan and it's good. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding the other pieces. Okay. Two, three, four, I'm only going to put five pieces in because I don't want it to overflow. That's the one thing you don't want. So if you start a grease fire like that, when that when I take that out, that batch out, I'm probably going to remove a little bit of that oil just so it won't have we won't have an overflow. You never want to overcrowd your pan because you'll lose heat like that, and then it'll change the texture of the chicken. It'll change the coating of the chicken. It won't be as crispy, and that's what you do not want. I like to use this frying method if I'm using like chicken legs or all wings but if I use a cut up chicken if I cut up a chicken then I'll fry it in a cast iron frying pan because there's nothing like the taste of that cast iron fried chicken especially on a Sunday when you're making fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy something like a um, KFC dinner but homemade that pan fried chicken tastes good the deep frying of the chicken helps it not to pop all over the place because when you're frying the chicken in a frying pan, it tends to pop, pop, pop all over. I switched eyes because I can work better with the chicken closer to me. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this oil. Okay. I'm just putting it to another stainless steel pan. Okay. I'm going to let that cool before I pour it up. And it's already, the sound of the chicken has already changed. It's frying better since there's not so much oil in it. Is that my tongue? I'm going to move it around. You really don't have to move it around because it's submerged in that hot oil. So every part of the chicken is going to be cooked. But I like to move it around a little bit to make sure it's good and it's good. Okay. So these are my tongs I like to use because I don't want my hand getting anywhere near that hot grease. Alright, now this chicken is flying really good this is what you want now you can listen to the chicken you hear it how it's flying now when the chicken is done it'll float and the flying sound that you hear will be a lot slower than what you hear now so i would pay attention to how when the chicken starts to slow down flying that's when you know it's done now i like my chicken to be crispy i don't want it to be really juicy juicy so i like mine to be a little extra crispy my water it's ready to add the pasta. That's how you want it to look when you're adding your pasta. Okay, we're gonna use the penne pasta. And go ahead and add it in there. And you wanna stir it immediately. That's not gonna give it a chance to stick to the bottom. Thirty seconds to a minute. So I want to add my oil because the oil will make the sauce slide right off of the pasta. So it's been about a minute, so we're gonna let that boil. And here is my corn drip. 
that in there because if you leave that metal spoon on the on the stove top, it's gonna burn your hand when you take it back up. And you never want to leave it in the in the boiling water. Chicken still looking good. Okay, so the first batch of chicken is ready. Now I can tell the difference in the frying, the speed of it, and everything is floating, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Be careful, you don't want to drop it. And once it's cooled down a little bit, we'll cut it to the bone so that you'll see that it's done. And since I took some of the oil out of it, I'm going to put a couple of extra pieces in there. And we just have it put into a colander with some paper towels under it. You can put it into a uh, square baking dish if you want to, or either a plate. Which just make sure you have your paper lining it. And that's good, that's good. That looks good and crispy. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes, let it let the all heat back up slightly, and we're gonna drop some more. And this is the pasta that's back here rolling. I've been stirring it the whole time, every few minutes, make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pot. And we're gonna cook it till it's done. I don't like al dente pasta. You don't want it mushy, you don't want it al dente. That's nowhere near done. You can tell by the look of the pasta. All right, we're gonna go ahead and drop some more chicken. Okay, so we have the last of our chicken already dredged in the flour. For this flour, it'll, it'll stay fresh for about two weeks. I keep it in the refrigerator. I cover it with the top that goes on it and I keep it for about two weeks. After that, I'll throw it away and start it over because we cook fried chicken a couple of times a week, maybe um, for pork chops or anything that I want to coat in the flour. It'll be used in there. All right, for this meal, we're going to have the fried chicken, the pasta, and we're going to have some corn that's really, that's just leftover corn. It's frozen, so I'm going to throw it in the microwave. So when we get ready to eat, we'll have the corn too. I've had to really learn to scale down my cooking because when I grew up, we had seven people in our household. Most of the time we were cooking and we cooked enough to have leftovers so we could eat the next day. Now with that pasta, me using the whole box like that, that's gonna be enough for two meals too. The chicken is gonna be enough for two meals unless I have company that's gonna come over, which sometimes my sons do. My daughter, she cooks a lot at home so she doesn't come out. This is the Sunday dinner. Now, this is the cream cheese and the whole stick of butter that I've chopped so it can melt a little bit faster. Now, as we can see, this is not a fat-free or a low-fat meal because we have the fried chicken and we're going to have this good buttery sauce on the pasta. We're going to put chicken bouillon and we're going to put a can of cream of chicken soup with the cheese. Now, if we need to add salt, we'll add salt, but for the most part, we're going to add pepper and after we get everything in, we'll taste it and add more as we go. Now we have the corn in the microwave, so it can thaw out and get warm. Now a lot of you, you see my reflection in that mirror. This is why I put the chopping board in front of it, because I don't want my image shown in that, <laughs> in that mirror most of the time. So most of the time when I'm in here cooking something, I'm going to have this chopping board in front of it. There's no telling how I'm going to be dressed. This is our second batch of chicken. Go ahead and turn it a little bit. Make sure it's frying good. Make sure all the pieces are down in the oil. And we have five pieces in here. One, two, three, four, six pieces. We're going to put seven pieces in the last batch because there's only one extra piece left for me having too much oil in the first batch. Nice we're going to give this pasta another stir. Have a little sticky there. And we're going to take one of these bad boys out. Let it cool down so we can taste it and see how much longer we need to cook it. That one sit out there a little bit. 
restaurant. I tasted the pasta. It's not quite done yet. Maybe five more minutes and it'll be done. What we're gonna do right now is get a piece of this chicken out. I'm gonna plate it, cut down in there to the bone, make sure it's done, even though I know it's done. Okay, I'm gonna take that piece. Ooh, it's still hot. So you see it's done. That's all the way down to the bone. And if it's red or blood running, it's not done. So we're gonna let that cool, then we're gonna let Lauren eat that, and I'll taste a little piece of it. So the second batch of chicken is ready, and we're gonna go ahead and take it out. This is the pasta. And it is also ready. I framed it. I'm just going to start adding our spices and our seasonings to it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my flavor. I thought I had a spoon over here. I don't what happened to it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the bouillon. That's a pretty good serving there. You stir it around. I add that first because I want my pasta to be coated with flavor before I add anything else to it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and taste one. It's a little hot. Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> That's okay. It's good. I did taste it before I dropped it on the floor. Okay. I'm still like a few. Hot. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has flavor to it. It has so like no nose, like ooze mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so this is a whole stick of butter that I've already sliced or cut up, sort of melt a little bit faster. Put that in there. Give it a stir. Okay. Come over a little bit. Over the pot a little bit better. This is a whole block of cream cheese. And that's okay. going to make it creamier and put some other cheese. Okay, next we're going to add our soup. The mushroom soup. Come on. This is cream of chicken soup. So we're gonna add that oh, in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stir the edges oh. off. And yes. all that soup out that can. That is my spatula that I love to use. Okay, I'm gonna stir everything up. And this makes a pretty big pot. This is enough for two meals. And when you heat it up the next day, one thing you have to do is add some milk to it and let it heat up slowly so that it won't stick. Now we're going to add the Parmesan cheese. I'm going to turn the eye up a little bit just so that it simmers a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the top all the way off of this. And this can opener removes the whole lid so that you won't have sharp edges. I'm going to go ahead and put some milk in there. Carnation evaporated milk. And it's boiling. No constipated. No. Half of the can so far. That butter is melted, the cream cheese is melted, and the last thing that has to melt is the Parmesan cheese. But basically, it's ready. That's all you have to do. Once the pasta is done, this is what it looks like. 
on your plate. Look at that cheese. Mm -hmm. It looks melted and good. Now that's better than any pasta sauce I've ever tasted. Nor Lipton, any other brand. Look at that. See if I can get. And by the time this cools down a little bit, that last batch of chicken is going to be good. We're going to stir it. We're going to turn it. Gosh, and the corn is already thawed. How does it taste? Look, I'm crunchy. Okay. Okay. Okay, now everything is done. For our meal today, we have crispy fried chicken, corn, buttery corn, and this is our pasta side. And this is what it looks like. Good, buttery, and creamy. And this is what it looks like plated. Looks pretty good. Okay, guys. So here, I'm done with my meal for today. And I just wanted to tell you that, you know, anytime you want to save a little time, I know it's really super convenient to be able to go to a fast food restaurant and get your meals. But with my videos, I'm showing you simple cooking techniques that are fast. And it'll save you some time. If you learn how to cook at home because you'll have leftovers that'll end up saving you money now you don't have to do exactly what i do but i like to cook at home <laughs> my husband loves the convenience of going out and we try to switch up cooking days some days i cook when it's his turn to get the meal or, or provide the meal then we'll go out to eat or he'll bring something home so i hope you like this video if you do like share and subscribe now, if you want to receive notifications every time I upload a new video, click on the bell. Thanks.